Hey, hey, math people. I just wanted to make a quick video on inverse functions uh, and, and, and the graphs of inverse functions in particular. Um, so what I have going on here, maybe I shouldn't have shook it like that. Um, I have uh, two inverse functions, f of x and g of x. I went ahead and labeled one as a solid red line and the other as a dashed red line. And something special happens here. I have symmetry across y is equal to x. So um, what does that mean? It means that, uh, well, since they're inverses, since the idea behind inverse uh, functions is you, you honestly just end up taking that x and that y and then switch those positions between the two, you reverse them, it's sort of that opposite idea, uh, you have this mirror-like effect. So you would take 0, 5, which in this situation is um, the y-intercept of f of x, uh, and you can flip that to get 5, 0, which is the x-intercept of the inverse, g of x. Uh, it's a cool idea. You get this mirror-like effect. Um, and this is true for any uh, two inverse functions. Um, so here we have um, f of x equal to 4x minus 9. And the inverse of that would be x plus 9 over 4. Uh, like, likewise, we can take a look at um, x squared plus 3. You just have to set a certain domain restriction to it to get that perfect inverse function um, relationship going on there. As you can see, this is perfectly symmetric about y is equal to x. And then the last one, another linear one, I have 1 half x minus 1, and that uh, has an inverse of 2x plus 2. So what I want to look at is why is it symmetric around y is equal to x? Well, there's a lot of different lines of thought, and I'd like to share that with you. Okay, here I have a clean slate on Desmos for us. What I want to do is play around with an old school topic, inverse operations, which surely you have mastered by now. Um, the idea of inverse operations is quite simple. Let's just take a value x, and uh, what I'm going to do at first is I'm going to add 2 to it. How do I undo plus 2? What is the inverse, the reverse process of plus 2? Well, it would be subtract 2. And you would get a line that looks like this. Um, how about we try something else? How about we try multiplication? Um, I'll do 3 times x. What is the inverse of multiply by 3? Well, that would be the reverse process, which is divide by 3. And when you look at that, I now have the same line. How about we play around with something a little bit more algebra 2 y? Um, how about we do the cube root of x? So I think I have to go into the functions here. Yeah, here it is, nth root. So I'm going to do the cube root of x, which is this curve right here in green. So in order to undo the cube root, well, that's not too bad actually. I just cube it. The opposite of cube rooting is. Well, cubing. So I'm going to put this to the third power, and once more, you'll see I get that same line. All three of these lines, red, blue, and green, are all on top of one another. Um, so what line is this? It's your boy, y is equal to x. That's where that mirror comes into play. Um, the idea is simple. They undo one another. When your input is x, and you are um, inputting it into a process that already undoes itself, the output would be x. Um, that's what's going on right here. Uh, the operations in the inverse functions are perfectly established so that it, it, it undoes itself entirely. You put in x, out comes x, but you get this mirror of x. That's all I have for you today, guys. Uh, I'm going to ask you to continue mathing on, and I will do the same. I'll see you in the next video.